I just appreciate you guys showing me how little I still know about flow. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> it's not your daddy's workflow engine anymore, is it? <laughs> no, it ain't. Let's see, Brandon, do you want me to go first and share? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, because I got nothing. So this nope. is all you. <laughs> oh, awesome. <laughs> Let's see. So for KSBJ, um, they had this flow that they wanted to run. Um, and before, you had to click into the contact and then open the flow and then click the flow to run from here. And they decided that was too much. So they wanted this to be in the ribbon. So the original way, and it's very similar to the, the new solution we found was to create an HTTP request for the flow and to basically just put in the, the body and the JSON, but then you had to write this JavaScript code and then connect it into the XRM toolbox. But there's a new solution made by Scott Duro. Um, and he's the one who created the ribbon workbench, I believe. Um, and what he did is he created smart buttons um, in in the XRM or the ribbon workbench. And basically, all you have to do is actually let me go back. Download from his GitHub the smart buttons um, zip file. And you actually do have to put it into your solution. Um, as a smart like inside of it, but that allows you to when you open XRM to basically just drag the since it was a webhook, we just drag it and put it in where we want. Um, and then all we would have to do is copy the URL from our flow and that will just let us connect to it from there. Um, and it was pretty pretty simple, honestly, a lot simpler than like having to write the code and stuff. And you can even put stuff like before they actually runs, like, hey, do you want to make sure? Or and after it runs, it tells you like, oh, it ran successfully. Um, and you can like choose what images you want to use and stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't know. There's also a lot of other things you could do, like workflows, JavaScript, and other stuff with these smart buttons but i just realized it was a lot easier than like having to write all this code and then figure out like all this part um, but yeah it's basically it so oh let's see who's got their two, hand up uh two questions yes so using HTTP, how did you handle uh, the URLs in the different environments? Or did you just make the change in production? I guess the question is, if it's HTTP and you you mm -hmm. made a change in dev, right? The URLs mm -hmm. will change in production. So how are you dynamically changing the URLs? Did you create a config, use environment variables, out of the box variable definitions? Like how are you pulling the webhook URL, because if you hard code it, then you have to configure the ribbon workbench every environment you push. And if you the system resets, sometimes they reset the URLs too, just FYI. Um, so any ideas there? No, I, I bet you I bet you we manually updated it. Well, I see that you manually updated it, but I was just asking whether the <laughs> what would yeah, be the best practice? Yeah, yeah, best practice. Um, I'd probably say I imagine environment variable might work for us. I think the hard part is that it's the URL is tied to the button. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. so I think that'd be something that you know, as we do this more, how do we best handle that? Right. Yeah. The JavaScript so, idea is really nice right about now. Yeah. Or, awesome. you know, it might be, you know, a combination of both. Maybe the JavaScript just makes the, the post request, right? And then right. it's easy for us to go query the config and then kind of push it up. Even but better. yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah, no, that's that's uh that's a good point. Yeah. 
Yeah, cool. Um, I have the same issue um, with another client where every time we deploy, we have to generate a new, like the URLs are ch changing. <laughs> so <laughs> it's kind of it tough. Overrides but it yeah, time. yeah. <laughs> and then it's pointing to a wrong environment, you know, to run the flow. So anyway, yeah. just a thought. There. Oh, you know what? I wonder if what we did is that we updated before we push it, we updated in dev to the production URL, just so you don't get an you update fraud. Okay. I mean, granted, it's still like, you know, a pre or post deployment step right now. So, OK, but it's also a step that you have to do anytime you make any type of update to the contact ribbon, right? Yeah, because even if you make an unrelated update, if you don't you need to update it. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Any patch or update to that, you know, essentially to the contact, it's going to bring the ribbon changes with it. So. Yeah, this seems like a really interesting idea, um, but that's kind of a big drawback. They need yeah. to implement a way to make an environment variable or something like that. Yeah. Because yeah. I would love to use this for reports and workflows and, and stuff like that, but that's mm -hmm. that's a pain. Yeah. That URL yeah, thing. Every time it's going to be kind of a beast. Well, it's probably not a beast. It's just, yeah. you know, pre or post steps. Yep. Well, you if know, it's you know, that one time you forget. Yep. <laughs> and then that's the only like, time they use <laughs> this feature. <laughs> yep, it's true. So yeah, I think it'll take some playing around. I mean, it's just kind of it's kind of slick how much you can do without code nowadays. But at the same time, as as you go down that road, you always remember how much you miss the code. So okay. it's one of those double-edged swords. The second question was, um, with smart buttons, what I've found is that there are dependencies that you may need to also export the smart button solution into every environment you're using smart buttons. Did you encounter that? It's been a while since I used smart buttons, but the last yes. time I did it, I pushed a solution to production too. Correct. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it's still the same, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Sweet. All right. Thank you, Andres.